our priority number one for this year, for 2018, is to establish a women and girls agricultural skills training center and to have a deeper understanding on how we could adapt to climate change. that we create the space and that we amplify the voices of their mobilizing and their organizing. When women and girls mobilize and organize, they make change. They change the world. We have seen this year, uh, for decades. It's women's mobilizing that has achieved all that we see uh, in gender equality. And so strengthening movement building, strengthening the mobilizing and organizing of women and girls, that is what is going to create change. So, so that is the big hope, that that mobilizing and that organizing strengthens and, and, and powers from day to day. Rural women need to be assisted, to become more empowered. But there will be no one answer, no one size fit all solution for all of them. Let us know that the rural uh, women are, are various. You know, they are young, they are, mid, uh, they are women in their productive years, and they are elderly people, they are disabled women, they are, you know, all categories of women in the, in the rural areas. So the solution should be to understand the context of these rural women and provide means which enables the variety of needs of these categories of women to be met. Learning to organize at that level, at the grassroots level of these women so that their voices become heard, so that they understand the issues and are able to articulate them is a very important uh, entry point. I think that probably would be one of my most important priorities. You know, the most important thing is that sh they should start living life free from violence. And also that rural women must be seen and considered as farmer. She is the producer. She is the one who's working hard in the rural areas. Uh, but uh, all kinds of schemes, programs reach out to only male farmers and they are considered as farmers. So recognize their contribution to agriculture and uh, farming and also, of course, the young children, rural adolescent girls, to empower them with education. My number one priority is that we allow women and girls to know that they have a voice and they're not a second-class citizen. That regardless of whether we come from the fields or we come from one of the, the highest corporations it is, we're still the same. And if we stick together and know that we are women and women have a great power and I look one day to, we're still waiting on that first female president and it could be a woman from out the fields, out the rural area. Could be me. I think one has to start with education. I think education for girls is the, the, most, the most important thing. But when we say education, we mean allowing the girls to get to school safely. When they get there, to have proper bathrooms so that when, if they're menstruating, that they can have uh, a privacy. Good teachers, and also models, expectations, not to be told, all right, you're a girl from a rural area, no expectations, but to give them expectations. And when the UN measures it about education for girls, it's not only who attends, it's who finishes ele the elementary school and then secondary school, who finishes. So the single most important issue, I think, is our survival. And addressing the reality of nuclear war and what that would mean, and also spreading awareness and promotion of the new nuclear ban treaty. We've got more than 120 countries, member states at the UN, that have accepted this treaty. The nine nuclear countries have not. And this is a very important issue for all of us because 
we either stop the potential nuclear war um, or we stop ourselves for all time. My number one priority is education. I believe if we really commit to make sure, and I don't mean just schooling education, really information that girls need that makes their lives better is really important. And at the same time, schooling as well, because if a girl can read and write and access information on her own, her life will be a thousand times better. And then you know that she's going to bring that information to her family and community, and that will definitely domino affect the whole country. I would love to see not just a country and a region, but I'd like to see a world that is free of violence, especially sexual violence against women and girls. I will consider it a great accomplishment for not just me, but for the organizations that I work with and represent if there comes a time when sexual violence and gender-based violence is reduced to the point of almost elimination. My number one priority are to work on the CEDAW Convention for Women and Girls because we are seeing in Trinidad and Tobago quite a number, a large number of attacks on women particularly women in the rural areas and girls. And therefore, it is our aim, it is our drive to continue to work on those areas where we can empower our women and take them out of that culture. World leaders, in my opinion, should uh, uh, ensure that children, uh, uh, mainly girls, get educated and empowered and uh, for my opinion, to get equal to boys. And number one priority is certainly getting out there and trying to get them connected and empowered through the digital technology and celebrating the stories that we have in New Zealand of how they've turned some of their challenges of distance remoteness into their opportunities and the resilience of these women to go, actually, I need something else because where they are on farm, they're not earning money or where they live, they've turned into some incredible businesses and some of that resilience and some of that, the ideas that they've got would be great to resourcefulness to share with other people. Issue of SDG 5, women, gender equality and women empowerment. We have the target on uh, target 5, 6, 8, where it talks of creating reforms that will uh, make women achieve equal, uh, equal opportunities and on the issue of land rights, uh, on the issue of resources, issue of economic empowerment. This is my number one, my number one priority. We need security. We need peace. That is priority for, for us, because if we, we have peace in our country, we can work ourselves to change our situation. We are strong, but is, our priority is peace. My number one priority, but I'm going to pinch two at the same time. One is that the UN appoint a special rapporteur to address widowhood and that actually governments do much more to support with social justice funding widows to band together so that we can hear their voices. I think it's the, the right to land is the first step. They need to have the right to land because that means that uh, when they have access to land, they have also a better quality of housing, uh, the right to food, the right to education, so all these issues are connected. My number one priority to improve the lives of women and girls would be so that they have access to health care, excluding their social determinants, and it doesn't depend on the zip code they live, the area they live, or what their socioeconomic status is. The number one priority for improving the lives of women in the rural areas around the world 
but to make sure that they have access to quality primary care. Education is my number one priority because I do believe that if these women were educated, they can go far. They can be really empowered to do something for the development, not only of themselves, but in their community. So for me, it's about creating a global environment where women have role models and stories and narratives that position them as change agents, whether it be in the political space, the work space, the economic space, the family space. Those are the ways to really change the world, is to give people the belief that they can make a difference, and then the tools and the knowledge and the access to actually do it.